I just saw the Avengers today. It was freaking awesome! You can abuse me, I'm a god. What does Hulk do? Hulk smash! That was really stupid and retarded, so I got to see that. Can I sit down? Thank you. That's much better. This video is going to show you some pretty cool things about Ice Cream Sandwich on the Evo 3D. I made the How to Install video with my Transformer Prime. I was at work on my lunch break, and that's when I recorded it, because I wasn't going to be home for a while, and I wanted to go ahead and put the word out there that the update was available. And I get a lot of mixed emotions about people saying, thank you so much for taking your time to speed up the video. Nobody needs to sit through a long loading screen or for a ROM to install. Then I get other people that say, slow down, you're going too fast. So you know what? I'm going to keep doing things the way I want to do them. If I'm going too fast for you, simply pause the video. You can drag the little thing that how far into the video or how far back you want to go and just do that. I try not to fast forward through important steps. The only thing I really fast forward through are, you know, times where it can get kind of lengthy. And I want to keep you guys and gals attention. If I make you sit through a long boring part, you're going to fast forward through it. And you might miss something that's important. And before I do this, I want to go ahead and point out that I do have a second channel. Josh is nice. I'm just going to put a link to my second channel in the description where I post videos that don't belong on this channel. Like updates. Please check it out. If you want to, you can subscribe. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But it's more of a non-professional, quick uploads for my phone kind of thing. But anyways, let's get to the video. The quality of this video should be a little bit better than what I posted a couple days ago. Right off the bat, you're going to notice that the home screen has changed and you have the five icons down here at the bottom. Now with Android 4.0, you do have a folder type system where you can drag and drop stuff in there. If you want to change the name of the group, just tap up here and type in whatever you want it to be. Now I much prefer the actual AOSP style. That just takes up a lot of space up there and you don't get as much stuff in there. And to get it out of the group it's as simple as just taking it and dragging it somewhere else. And it also works down here as well. You can drag and drop multiple things down there. So these are changeable to whatever you want them to be. The app drawer really hasn't changed all that much. Not much of a difference there. What you are going to notice the difference with is if you hold the home button down. Now you have your multitasking. To close apps out, you just slide them out of the way. Now you have no running apps and plenty of RAM. Also, this has changed. You got your normal things up here, which I preferred mean ROM because those weren't in the way. And you can take things and just slide them out of the way. Ice cream sandwich style. See, now I just have this one thing, which I'm going to go ahead and click on it. I'm going to change the way the battery looks. I'm just going to click download. Alright, that's finished. I don't know if I can just click on it. No, i got to go to Goo Manager. And then from here, I can choose Reboot Recovery. And with Ice Cream Sandwich, yeses will be on the right and noes will be on the left. I like Team One Recovery because it's touchscreen. Couch does have a touchscreen clockwork mod recovery for this phone, but you cannot charge your phone while it's off and you cannot mount your SD card. And it just seems to me that Team Win is more on top of things than Couch is as far as fixing things and releasing timely updates. Way to go, Team Win. I really like your recovery. I'm using it on my Transformer Prime, HP Touchpad, Evo 3D, and any other device that it supports. I will be doing a video tomorrow on the Transformer Prime. I'll even start working on it tonight actually where I install CM9 and then I'm going to install AOKP. Now to install that battery mod I just go to install and then I go to my downloads folder or wherever you placed it. And you'll see it's right there. I'm going to go ahead and swipe it to confirm it. Alright it does all the cache and stuff for you itself. That's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and reboot and fast forward. With the newest Beta 2, he has gotten rid of the startup sound, which is freaking awesome. And he also got rid of Super SU and replaced it back with Super User. So root should not be a problem right out of the way. Before, you had to install Super User and update the binaries with that. And then you could use Super SU or you could uninstall Super SU and go back to Super User. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Super SU, but I prefer to use Super User. That took a couple minutes. Now see, would you have rather waited through all that, or did you like the fact that I sped it up?
And right away you'll notice that the battery icon is different now. Let me zoom in on that. Now you may or may not notice it, but it has a little percentage now in the battery icon. I guess that's kind of cool because with CM9 you can have the percentage right next to it. So that does free up a little bit of space, but I don't think you'll be able to see it while it's charging. All right, back to the notifications. You got quick settings like normal, but they're totally different now. There are these little things that you can either press or slide over and up here it tells you which network you're connected to. If you want to quickly go to your Wi-Fi settings, you just click that and then bam, there you are. It tells you your free available memory, but it's always done that. And this you'll also notice is different too. You got your data usage. And as you can see, the Google Play Store is used it the most. If I had been running this ROM for a while, Titanium Backup and YouTube would have been the most used ones because I'm constantly syncing to Dropbox, Box.net, and Google Drive from Titanium Backup to make sure that all my apps are safe and secure. You can use Wi-Fi Tether since this is a rooted ROM. Not this built-in one, but you can use the actual app. You just gotta change the device profile to Amaze 4G and uncheck the routing fix. It just have MSS clamping checked. And one thing I highly recommend doing is unchecking Fastboot. Once you install this ROM, that'll be on there by default. Your phone won't actually fully shut down and reboot. It'll just kind of suspend things and reboot it quickly. I'm going to go to About Phone, Software Information, and you'll see that it's Android 4.0.3. I'm running HTC Sense 3.6, Viper ROM Iced Beta 2. If Viper Boy sees this, that is an awesome name. This is the Virgin Mobile version, so you will see Virgin Mobile up there. There is an actual Sprint RUU, but you will get a brand new H-Boot of 1.57, which is for the Virgin Mobile version. I don't know which one that one does. But I am currently on HBoot 1.4 because I have never installed an official update. In fact, when I very first got the phone in the mail, when it said checking for updates, I canceled it right then and there. HTC is never going to get their hands on my HBoot come smarter than that. I'm going to make it very clear that if you got a replacement or a brand new Evo 3D and you have HBoot 1.5, that doesn't mean it's your fault. I'm not saying that by any means. I'm just saying do not apply official updates. No matter how excited you are about it, just know that HTC <laughs> is going to try to make things more complicated and with HBoot 1.5 and above you cannot flash a kernel inside of recovery. You have to use Fastboot, Flash Image GUI, or HTC Dumblock. Or you can downgrade your bootloader to 1.4. One really cool thing that I also want to show you guys if you go to security and then you go to screen lock, face unlock, you have face unlock. There's my camera. I'm going to get a better tripod that has a little arm on it. It's like a crane. So for now this is my setup. And I'll do a pattern and just do a real easy one. Now I'm going to lock the phone and then unlock it. That's one thing I really don't like. It's an extra step, especially with your quick shortcuts. If you want to use the camera, huh? Wait a minute. Let's, let's, let's go back to that. So if you got your Gmail or whatever in here, your messages, oh, there we go. But the camera does it. Yeah, you can jump directly to the camera, but as soon as you press home, it does the face unlock. Uh, see, it detected my face and it unlocked. That was pretty quick too. Look, that's fast. No editing at all, let's try this again. One more last time. That's quick. So there is official face unlock. Plus, you do have a 3D camera. But I showed that in my video of how to install it. It won't show up in 3D on here, but there you go, it is in 3D. Ugh, mess with your eyes. I actually have not even used the 3D feature since I freaking got the phone. Now, the camera is a little bit different. You have effects, like Instagram, your gallery, scenes. You switch it to the, oh, that's how you do video real quick. I actually couldn't figure it out the other day. I just set a shortcut right there to camcorder. You just press mode, and then you toggle it over, and there it goes to the camera. And then if you want to switch to the front, 
That's pretty cool. I like that. When you very first install the ROM, first thing you're going to want to do is click here on quality and change it to HD because it's going to be on either high or QHD when you very first install the ROM. And trust me, the only reason you want to use a lower quality is if you're going to upload it using 3G. That's another thing. 4G does work and you can tell in my install video, I live in an apartment with a few floors above me so I do not get 4G at all. In fact, I don't even get a signal. I have to stand by a window or step outside to make a phone call. It's pretty bad. I have a little track phone for emergency calls. It uses AT&T's network and I could go deep into a closet or anywhere I want to go and I still get five full bars. So there you go. There's a quick rundown of Android 403 ice cream sandwich on the HTC Evo 3D. Everything works. I mean everything. The only thing is, is you're going to see Virgin Mobile up there. Whenever the Sprint version comes out, which I'm pretty sure Viper Boy is working on getting the actual Sprint version into his ROM instead of the Virgin Mobile one. But it doesn't matter. That's the only thing you're going to notice is that it says Virgin Mobile instead of Sprint. But trust me, everything works. I don't think there's anything else I can cover. If there's something you felt I missed, please leave it in the comments and I'll make it up to you by doing another video. I have many videos planned that I'll be working on over the next couple days and many other devices to cover. Trust me, if you're planning on getting an HTC Evo 4G LTE, you'll want to subscribe because I will do videos on that phone as well. And I won't be getting rid of any other devices. And as soon as I can, I'm picking up an Epic 4G D700 and I'll probably end up using that as my daily driver until the HTC Evo 4G LTE comes out simply because it has CM9, which I prefer over Sense any day, and it has a keyboard. Sense is a resource hog, takes up RAM, and it turns a beautiful UI into ugh. I much prefer stock Android the way it was meant to be. This is What Would Josh Do? If you don't mind, please give this video a thumbs up. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you like this video, please subscribe. I upload content on a regular basis. I put effort and time into it, and I try to please everybody. Again, this is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out.